Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So earlier this week, Azobo released Sim Update 5, which we're all now aware of, and this comprised of much faster loading times, much better frame rates, and better optimization of the simulator overall. But at what cost? Sim Update 5 coincided with the release of the simulator for the Xbox and many PC users have since then discovered that their graphics are now not what they once were. Microsoft Flight Simulator is still however the best visually compared to any other flight simulator on the market. But when you've been playing on Microsoft Flight Simulator day in and day out like I have since its release nearly a year ago, the downgraded visuals are really noticeable. Now this is obviously a trade-off between better frame rates versus better graphics and for those of us with a lower end PC World Update number 5 has been absolutely fantastic. You can now enjoy the stunning world of Microsoft Flight Simulator on a lower end, uh, low spec computer. But what about all those people with a high performance gaming computer? These PCs have the tools to be able to have the best of both worlds, surely. Great frame rates and the stunning visuals that Microsoft Flight Simulator has been delivering now for the past year or so. Now, personally for me, I fall in between these two categories with a mid-range PC. Uh, so I can kind of see the best of both worlds and the arguments on both sides. It's all personal preference, of course, though. But in this video, we're going to look at different things that you can do to get the graphics looking as good as they were prior to sim update number five. And we're going to go through a host of different things and we're going to compare screenshots as well so you can see the evidence for yourself. By the end of this video, though, you should know how to tweak things nice and simply, nice and easily. It's not complicated to do. And I hope this video gets you back the graphics that you personally want alongside the frame rates as well. So let's have a look. So here we are on the ground at Liverpool Airport. Of course, this is now a handcrafted airport following uh, the recent world update number three, uh, giving us some handcrafted airports around uh, the UK. And as we start to zoom out, just take a little look at the cars right at the top of your screen. You can see that there's not that much detail there. No problem, I'm not going to start nitpicking over uh, details like that, but as sort of a benchmark, I kind of want you to remember that for a little bit later on in the video. And you can see I'm just zooming up uh, nice and steady here using the drone camera, and as we get higher and higher up, uh, the quality does slowly start to degrade. Not by much though, I'm sure you'll agree, and what I found with this is if you are a, uh, a pilot that likes doing low level GA aircraft kind of flying then what you're getting with the scenery following the sim update number five actually isn't too bad at all because as long as you have got uh, your your scenery quite close to your aircraft then the images still remain nice and clear the fact that Sim Update 5 has also now got better optimization means that with the increased frame rates, you can even go ahead and turn up the terrain level detail and the object level of detail as well. Once we've got this applied, we can go back and you can see it is perhaps just a tiny little bit better. And we've got no frame rates loss uh, at, uh, at all. So great work by Azobo on this part with that terms of optimization. But what if we want to fly airliners at a higher altitude? Now, this is the kind of flying that you'll be most used to seeing me doing on the channel, uh, obviously, much higher up. We're still over uh, Liverpool in the northwest of uh, the UK. And as I zoom in, you'll see that these textures now are nowhere near as clear and clean and crisp as they used to be before the sim update number five. And I'm just having a little look down now. You can see just down there again, not bad looking, but not what we were used to seeing. And I think this video just here in this view shows you an even better uh, view of what I'm trying to uh, trying to get across. Uh, the blurred textures now around Liverpool Airport where we have, uh, have just departed. So how can we try and get these, uh, get these images crisp and clean like they used to be? 
So there are a lot of different things you can try. And the first thing you're going to need to do is find the user config folder. If you find your community folder um, on uh, using the Explorer, then if you go back just a couple of folders up to the local cache, uh, select that, then right down at the bottom, you'll find the user config. Now, if your PC is set to open this using text editor, that's fine. If not, you can just rename the uh, rename the file uh, .txt and then save that and you can now go in and edit the user config folder so once we've got that opened up there are two different versions there's version 66 a random name not sure why and then you've got uh, the graphics VR version now I don't use VR so the only part of this folder and file sorry that I'm going to be editing is the version 66 and you can see it's basically all my settings um, that has been set up in the uh, in, in the graphics options page in the flight simulator okay so if we come down here one of the things that I want us to find first of all is the film grain and you can see one it's obviously um, turned on and we can also see the sharpen uh, the color and we can also see the eye application so let's take a look at some images then this at the moment is how Microsoft Flight Simulator looks like um, following world update number five and I'm using my previous settings again there is a video you can go and check out that I've done on the channel which shows what settings I was uh, using uh, prior to uh, prior to sim update sorry sim update uh, number five coming out so I haven't changed any settings at the moment and this is what uh, downtown Chicago looks like so these are my previous settings for uh, after world update number four uh, prior to sim update number five I know that's a little bit confusing and you can see that it's not uh, not as great not as clear down below when we're uh, when we're at high level if we just have a look at a side view of that as well there you can uh, you can obviously see I've just added some clouds in uh, in there as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through those different options I showed you in the user config file and we're going to tinker around with those and I'm going to show you the difference then uh, between the uh, between the different screenshots so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn film grain off in order to do that we just uh, set zero uh, so let's go ahead and turn film grain off and and look at those so here is the original image as it stands now let's turn film grain off and there you should hopefully be able to see uh, there's a bit of an improvement on the on the textures down below everything does look a, a lot clearer as uh, as well if we have a little look at the side images and compare those two you'll probably not see too much difference between this the original image and then the film grain turned uh, off although it does look for me a little bit sharper in places particularly the clouds so leaving the film grain turned off and still my previous uh, settings from the world update number four now let's go ahead and turn off the sharpening the color grading and the eye adaptation now the reason that I've put this in as I've seen a few people say that uh, having the film grain with the sharpening the color grading and eye adaptation turned off looks better I'm not convinced I quite like the film grain but I'm not convinced about the uh, the other three let's just have a look at a side comparison and here we see the uh, original again with just the film grain turned off and then the others added and I don't see too much difference there, to be fair. Not enough to warrant wanting to turn those off. As I said earlier though, this is all dependent upon you, the user. You may see some things that you like that I don't particularly like, and it all depends on the kind of flying you do as well. Me, I'm usually doing airliner flying, so to me what's important next is trying to get those blurry textures down below back to being nice and sharp as they were prior to the recent update. So what can we do about that? If we go back into the uh, user config file, and again, this time have a look quite near the top, what we're looking at is the terrain and the objects uh, load, uh, the LOD. And here you can see I got that set to two. I'm now gonna increase that. You can change this as high as you wish to go, but obviously as you increase it, then you're going to get a frame rate hit. And the trick is trying to find that fine balance between the two. So let's go ahead and save that and start the simulator back up and let's see how that has affected it. 
Don't forget to change this back though to uh, the original uh, original type, otherwise it's not going to work in the simulator. So here we are back at Liverpool again, and remember I said that about the cars right at the start, again just as a benchmark, have a look at the detail you've now got in the cars, you can actually see windscreens until we start getting higher and higher of course, and then some of the details do start popping away, but nowhere near as much as they were prior to editing the uh, the LUD on, uh, in the config file. So, so far so good, but let's do a better test by getting a little bit higher up shall we? Let's go back to our original picture. So this is my previous settings before I started tinkering around with anything as the simulator stands following the sim update number 5 with my old world update number 4 settings. Um, now let's have a look what it looks like now I've increased the LOD settings. Hopefully with those two images now take a look at that you should be able to see much more clarity down below now remember that all I've done here is I have turned film grain off and I have added the LOD to uh, to a factor of five and just look at the difference between those two now jumping up to a factor of five of course the first thing that went through my mind is good lord what on earth are my frame rates going to be like after i push the uh, push the pc as uh, as far as that well take a look at this as a pilot in the simulator who flies airliners quite high up 45 frames per second is more than enough i'm happy with anything over 30 to be honest with you uh but look at the clarity of that image down below and we i should also have pointed out these images are taken at 20,000 feet uh so looking mighty fine and at 45 fps so i thought well what if i increase my render scaling uh, and get an even better image how how much more damage is that going to cause for the frame rates traded off against the graphics and as it turns out, not that much. I increased the render scaling by 20% and okay, we dropped down to about 35 FPS. But I'm quite happy with that and I'm more than happy with the graphics in the simulator just here. And if that couldn't convince me, then how about flying over Manhattan with the settings turned on as well. As of course, you can see the frame rates counter. I've already said I'm quite happy with the 30 FPS. This isn't the kind of flying I'd normally do anyway, but I've now got the graphics that I'm much more used to seeing uh, when I look out of the passenger windows, high up, much more clarity. And if you caught a live stream of mine a couple of days ago, uh, you have heard the disappointment in my voice following the sim update number five and how we just lost a lot of the images that we were used to seeing. We can go even higher above Manhattan and I've got rid of the frame rate counter because I don't count frames anyway. All I'm after is a nice smooth simulator experience which this is giving me and I'm just going to zoom in down here as well and look at that more than happy with that so this is a trade-off of course against frames versus graphics and the kind of flying that uh, that you guys do it's entirely up to you all i've given you here is my personal opinion on uh, how uh, how i want my simulator to be now could azobo have done this themselves are they going to do this themselves by adding uh, sort of extra margins in the graphic settings uh, in the future to uh, to the pc players at the moment of course this is just the first update since the xbox was released. I'm almost certain that in the future they're going to give PC players the added options of increasing their uh, their performance, their graphic performance uh, in the simulator. So fingers crossed for that. But until then, you now know how to go in and tweak those settings to get the view uh, that you're after. So please do go ahead and try this out. I'm very, very curious to see how you guys get on and what settings you uh, opt for and what you think is best. Leave those comments down below. As I say, I really want to uh, hear how you're getting on with that and what you feel is going to be the best setting for you and your particular PC and of course your tastes. This is all down to personal preference and this is uh, not me saying this is exactly what you should do. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you have found that useful. As I say, if you have, please leave a comment down below. Give the video a like and maybe subscribe and turn on the notifications bell as well so you don't miss any future videos. And of course, live streams, which from now on will once again feature beautiful graphics courtesy of the wonderful work that Azobo are doing in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Thanks for watching. Bye bye for now.